Here are five simple hacks to help you understand if you need therapy or coaching. Oftentimes, we don't really understand what's happening for us when we're moving through the motions in our day to day. We might feel very overwhelmed or even to the point where we're super angry and frustrated, but we gloss over it because we make it normal. I want to help you understand what's happening for you and if it's time for you to give somebody a call and that somebody can't be your friend. One, if you're feeling really overwhelmed with small tasks that used to be a breeze for you, it might be time for you to get help. When we're going through the motions and we're doing small things or even big things, but it's a part of our routine and we start to figure out like, wait, this feels super overwhelming. It might be a sign that your body is shutting down. Your body needs some time to talk through maybe some things that have been going on because things are compounding for you on a daily. Simple tasks like maybe doing laundry or washing the dishes might become so overwhelming in your brain and it becomes a stressful task because you haven't spoken to a professional. Yes, your friends are great. However, your friends and family can be a little bit biased. Professionals, professional coaches, professional therapists are able to give you a perspective from the outside. They can look at your problem, address it, and then tell you what you need to do to move forward. Now, before I move on to the next one, I want to just stop and say, hey, 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 Conscious Crew. Welcome back to the Conscious Creative Corner where I unpack your trauma to heal your relationships. I'm your host, Sia, the Transparent Therapist. Now, of course, if you're feeling super overwhelmed because it's like, oh no, I have to go take a shower. Uh, Boo hoo hoo, I can't do this. And this is not me in front of you. This is legit things that people go through. I want you to find some help. Thinking back to when I was, I think it was my second pregnancy and I was chasing around a one-year-old, just had my, my, my second son. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to go eat. And I remember crying about having to eat. It was at that point where I was just like, hold on, maybe I'm going through the baby blues, which is a thing. And I knew in that self, I could not serve myself as a therapist because I had on another role. So even us professionals out there, therapists, coaches, whomever in the helping profession, this is for you too. Yes, we help people all the time, but it's important to understand that we ourselves have to get help from someone else. I'm not just talking to you guys, I'm talking to myself too. Now consider if you are a part of this second group of people who are just crying all the time, maybe for no reason. Now I get it. Inherently, our bodies respond with some kind of physical response, right? So we might laugh, we might grunt, growl, we might cry, but that's because our bodies, it, it, it's, in, it's reacting to the environment. Something is telling our bodies that, hey, something's off. So though I might say you're crying for no reason, I will say you're crying for a reason that you aren't really sure about. It's not presenting forward facing, maybe something in your subconscious mind ring a bell and all of a sudden you're like, I'm crying. Or maybe you're watching someone at a gas station on television or someone eating dinner on television and you start boo-hooing. These are the things that you have to be aware of that might indicate like, okay, something's going on for me. I normalize crying all day. You step into my office and we're having a conversation and the moment you say, I'm so sorry because I'm crying, I'm going to tell you to stop because people are for cry, tear off a come on, tear eye. That's what it's meant for. It's meant to help you release energy. Tears are just another form of energy, so it's okay to cry. It's just not okay if we're crying so frequently without any reason that we are aware of. So working with a therapist, a coach, trauma recovery coach like myself, a certified therapist like myself, that is me, I am those things, I am she, I can help you, right? But if I can't help you, there are millions, maybe not millions, but thousands, hundreds of thousands professionals out there who can help. You see on my shirt, BetterHelp, this is not sponsored, but if y'all want to sponsor me, I am she. BetterHelp is a platform that you can go and text your therapist. It's very readily available. I used to work for BetterHelp some time ago, and it is, it's a very convenient application for people to use. Uh, So maybe the next thing, number three, Maybe your friends are like, hey, John, let's go out. Let's go catch a movie or let's go shoot some pool. And you're like, yeah, no, I'm good. I don't want to. This withdrawal, this constant withdrawal from your friends, the activities that you really love, because maybe you really love pool, it's a sign and an indicator that you might need to go work with someone 
to help. Now, I am telling you these things very surface level because you could also just be withdrawn because you're tired. I'm telling you this because if you're doing these things frequently, five days out of the seven days, you're feeling super withdrawn, very isolated, not enjoying the things that you used to enjoy, something might be going on. And we owe it to ourselves to acknowledge the things that are happening within us. All too often, we think that these things are happening and they'll breeze by, but sometimes they don't breeze by. These breezes go on for 10 years for some, especially for those who have life transitional events, the ebbs and flows of these events that are not being addressed. So you're withdrawing. Maybe you're not going out with your friends anymore, or maybe it's things I used to do for yourself. And I bring it back to myself when I had my second son. I, I used to be that girl, y'all. Those of you who've been rocking with me for the past 13 years before I turned this platform into a podcast, you guys know that I used to be a hair influencer. I used to do everything. I used to do my hair all the time. My makeup used to be done every day. I used to be, I used to model. I used to do all these things. But after having my second son, I was like, I don't I don't like doing this anymore. And it's not because I it's not because I didn't really like doing it anymore. It's more so because I just didn't know what was happening in my body. There were so many hormonal changes happening, so many mental changes. And I for sure thought it's like, oh, it's because I'm tired. But really, I think I was going through the baby blues, like I said before, maybe even some postpartum depression. That's probably a question for my therapist though. But because I did know that, hey, this is not like me, I enrolled myself into therapy. I want to say this though, guys, let's say you've been to therapy in the past and you're thinking like, yeah, I've been there, done that, doesn't work anymore. I'm here to tell you that therapy is a, it can be a lifelong thing. Though when you come into my office, I might say, hey, your job is to fire me because I want you to be self-sufficient. It's also okay to go back to your therapist too. So though someone might fire me five years later, which happens all the time, I get a call like, hey, do you have any room? I know it's been a while. And I say, yeah, come back. Because we go through these transitional periods, I do also understand that sometimes we don't need a therapist and sometimes we do. All right, so it's always okay to go back to a therapist or to find a new therapist or to fire your therapist if if he or she or they were horrible, right? Or if you're like, hey, I met all my treatment plan goals. So I'm here to say, go back if you need to. Nobody's judging. Number four, if you find yourself really thinking negatively all the time, like this impending doom, maybe like this Charlie Brown cloud over you that never goes away, it might be time to seek some professional help. We inherently, are, we do think negatively, right? As humans, I don't know why we gravitate to the negative, right? But when we have an immense amount of negative thoughts, so I'm never gonna do good, or I'm never gonna get this raise, or I suck at, those are not, it's not normal to think that way. It's not. I'm, it might be your normal, but it's not healthy, right? When we get professional help, maybe someone to sift through these thoughts, someone to help us reframe the way in which we're thinking, someone to help us reframe what's happening in our world so we don't think so negatively, it'll help. Trust me, 100%. I can't tell you how many times I've met with people, maybe only a handful of times, who said, you know, I really needed was a different perspective because my peers were on the same bandwagon as I was. Well, if your peers, your environment, is just continually perpetuating the same negative thought that you had in your head, you're never going to change. But again, if you're working with someone on the outside, someone who doesn't really know you, but can look at your situation with a fresh pair of eyes, it could possibly change your life, right? And it's just as simple as changing your thought for certain circumstances. When you are dealing with trauma, which I've talked about in my previous episodes, it's not so easy. But if we're talking about things where it's just like, I have this self-deprecating speech that I do all the time, I'm always talking down on myself, it might be helpful to maybe change your environment, change the people that you're speaking to, maybe getting into some circles or some groups that speak a little bit more highly of themselves and pour into you so that those thoughts and those patterns can change. Now, number five, if you feel like you have conquered a habit, maybe a bad habit, maybe it's like smoking cigarettes, maybe it's a bad habit of binge eating and down the line you're finding that you're going back to these bad habits repeatedly, it is probably time to find yourself some help. 
These bad habits that you're engaging in, I like to call them your firefighters. And now, if you guys know anything about parts work or IFS, which is internal family systems, it's another form of therapy that I do with my clients. But it basically says that we have all these parts of us that come up and they're here to protect us. Now, if you guys want a whole explanation, because I can talk for days about trauma and days about IFS and days about EMDR, let me know in the comment section. But this part of you that's coming up, I like to call it the firefighter. It comes up, this unhealthy habit comes up because it puts out the fire really quickly, right? Oh man, I had a bad day at work. Let me binge eat or binge watch Netflix or binge eat like these two tubs of ice cream. Those are the parts of you that say, hey, I need something to coddle me right now. And again, notice how I didn't say they're bad. They're, I'm not saying they're good either. What I'm saying is they're here to protect you, these parts, but they are pretty unhealthy, okay? They might be so unhealthy to the point where they become your every day. And so then now your unhealthy habit that you used to kick to the curb is back. My unhealthy habit used to be eating. I used to love me, y'all. I used to love me some Toll House cookies. I used to go to Burger King. It was Toll House cookies and French fries. When, y'all, three, having three kids is, is a lot. I love them, but it's a lot. And they were all little, right? And so this is my third child now. When I was having a bad day, I would, say, I would tell my husband, I need some French fries and cookies. Even to this day, I, I will admit, I will tell my husband I need some cookies. And so when we, although it's not a bad habit right now, but when you are getting into this kick where it's like, I need this thing, I need, notice saying I need, not want, I need, I'm telling myself I need this to move forward, it's not healthy. Because then I become the problem. It's not the thing, it's not my husband getting it for me, it's not your friend who's like, oh here, take this drink. It's not the friend who's like, come on girl, put on your, your... nobody says free come anymore. <laughs> put on your dress, let's go to the club. It's not them, it's you. You are the problem in your narrative. And so how do we shift it? By getting help. Your friend means so well, trust me. They mean so well because what they know is, hey, I know every time Trishana is feeling away, let's get her out, let's get her dancing because it's gonna make her feel better. The thing is, you know that this is a habit that you no longer want. And so once you've already warded off and now you're falling back into this funk, your friend only knows one tool. So it's up to you to make that change. Get some help. Like I said, I am a trauma recovery and relationship coach. I am also a licensed psychotherapist who is certified in trauma. Depending on where you get me and where you're from, that's who I am for you. However, if you're somewhere where I don't have jurisdiction to help you, which I do now, but if I'm too full, I urge you to go on things like psychology today. I urge you to go on things like BetterHelp, even though they not sponsor me. Lord knows I need a sponsor. Get the help you need because it's going to be so beneficial for not only you, but people around you as well. So they no longer offer you those healthy habits or unhealthy habits that you already kicked to the curb. Now, if you're still wondering, like I'm in my relationship, I'm not sure if I'm really the problem. I'm going to urge you to click the link below. There's words that say, are you the problem? It's the assessment that I have where it tells you some of the areas in your life that you can either work on and at the end I give you a score and I tell you how you can assess and work through those problems so that you're no longer the problem in your relationships. Now, if that is not good enough for you, there's something that just popped up right here. I need you to click it because I give you guys so much valuable information on how to move in and out of your trauma, move in and out of your anxiety, your depression, anything that is causing you to move away from your homostatic state or your regular state, your normal state. I need you to click this video because it's going to help you. All right, guys, thank you for another wonderful episode with me. Walk good, keep the vibes high, and I will see you in the next one.